someone um like guiding me more you know maybe maybe like through the content and all of those things because every time i'm like um let's say watching youtube videos about like people who like publish books they're like oh yeah like my coach or like my uh like they have like someone that like help them to like work on the content and all of those things so mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's very new world honestly i just started that book because like i um was hearing so many people saying like oh yeah like french people like what's your secret with like and i was like oh it would be fun to just like share it with everyone and just like make everyone happy Um, and it was a pandemic so there were like nothing else to do (laughs) so all right um and uh so your expectations Mm. I will be happy if it's more like a hardcover that can be maybe in like stores um, okay. than just like Amazon because Amazon is great, but it's also um, very interesting their way of doing things with like KDP publishing and all of those. Um, I think you might be able to... Um republish with a hardcover with them mm-hmm. uh you know I, I whether or not you got an and did you get it you uh, i assume you, you have an isbn number mm-hmm. okay. i do so it, um you don't officially um well i i think you would get a second isbn number for for a hardcover yes um, and then the two of them would be you know two products i i um, when I contacted like uh, publishing houses, they were like, "Oh, you're already on Amazon, right?" You already right. Have you see, you see, that's what I'm. I'm sorry. The bad news there is that as far as having an um, a traditional publisher publish you, once you've self published, um, they're just not as interested because they're competing with your previous self publishing. So it's kind of um, for you, it might be more of a focus of creating a, a whole other version, mm-hmm. or um, with a with a hardcover. Uh, and if it were a different book than once you've self published, then mm-hmm. you might have something to approach a publisher, a traditional publisher. Um, okay, on maybe it. that's that's the direction I would like to go. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay. Yeah. All right. Did we? Well, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah. Did we have an, any other people, uh, Gabrielle? Yes, ma'am. We have a Terry who has yep. joined our group. Terry. Hi. Hi, Hi. Patricia. Hi. Um, I'm a graphic designer whose friend wrote a book. And so I'm just laying it out for him. And um, it's almost done. Um, and um, we're thinking of e-publishing it because uh, it's not like he has, you know, the, it's... I'm not sure really what the best way is. I've done books before, but, um, you know, he wants to get this out as widely as possible and I want to help him do that, you know? And so I don't know how much money he's got to put towards it. I don't think it's a lot. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not sure how interested he's going to be in, Uh, marketing the book oh well (laughs) so he has conflicting desires this is the hardest thing if somebody really wants to get the book into the bookstores but they don't have a lot of uh, interest or time or money for a a decent marketing campaign and you can't have both simultaneously you know it's like i'm sorry but you the 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 marketing uh workshop is called uh love it live it or die (laughs) marketing you know and that's kind of where it rests um he he needs to reassess his priorities if his priority is to get it out there then as quickly as possible it that doesn't work with getting any kind of a traditional publisher okay okay so an ebook is definitely a you know a potential but no so you have an ebook if you don't <laughs> if you don't let people know you have an ebook, it's not going to really do a lot either. Right. I agree. And so this is a hard reality for a lot of people. And I'm really, really sorry. Um, uh, but to a degree, people don't understand 
uh, they're very turned off by the concept of marketing and, and, and it's important to redefine that marketing is let, letting you, your targets, your audience know that you have a really good thing for them. And what's wrong with that? Because if you don't let, let people know, nobody gets the benefit of the wonderful book. So it, it's about just thinking about the fact that you're doing a service for people by letting them know instead of feeling like, oh man, I don't want to be a salesman. And that's exactly where he is. You know, it's just the, the issue of time and money. And, you know, just like you said, also unfamiliarity with marketing and how much time that takes and expense. Um, if we do with, go with an ebook, do you have a, a recommendation? I will, uh, okay. you know, as I get into it. Today or in the marketing? No, you, no. In, you mean a recommendation for? For an ebook. Well. Publisher, an ebook method, you know, format. Well, the, you know. Okay, there's, yeah, there's a really important hot tip that I have about ebooks that will be coming up in my talk. So, yes, I, I, you'll, I think you'll find that answered. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyone else? No, that appears those are all the attendees all right. thus far. Okay, well, hey, you three are worth it. Okay, <laughs> you are. All right, so um, thank you for all that. I, I, what I'm going to be sharing with you is still an overview. Um, but as I said, I've got some hot tips <laughs> within the overview. And the reason it, I'm going to call it an overview is because it's a very evolving industry. The publishing industry changes constantly. Uh, and there are a lot of specifics, you know, I'll pop, I have, I pop a few factoids in about some specifics, but basically, yay, we have Google. God bless Google. And Google will answer a lot of questions. Uh, I, it's underutilized in this area uh, as far as finding a publisher. Um, but, I, but the overview I give you will give you a lot of guidance um, in, in what your choices will be. So um, here's, a hot, here's my first hot tip, and this is vital. And that is to invest time and a little money to educate yourself early before you get to the publishing part. Um, and when I say educate yourself, uh, of course, webinars like we're doing right now, but I'm also talking about a much deeper dive and you do that by joining writers associations um, and you start reading their articles and their blogs. Uh, I can recommend Ally, which is capital A, capital L, capital L, small I. It's Alliance for Independent Authors. It's $89 to join, but they, um, you can get a lot of value from their website without joining. Uh, if you do join, uh, they have some wonderful books that will guide you and help you uh, at, that are free downloads if you're a member. Uh, and one of the books uh, talks about the best self-publishing services um, on a rating chart. Uh, so that's extremely helpful. Another is the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, the, uh, the Romance Writers of America, you know, whatever your book is, Sci-Fi Fantasy Writers Association of America. And even though it's sci-fi and fantasy writers, they have a very important um, website called Writer Beware, where they give a lot of um, ratings of uh, publishers who you should stay away from and pub publishers uh, that they get complaints about. Uh, for published writers, the Authors Guild, uh, has a wonderful website and all of these things have like newsletters, online newsletters and blogs that are so helpful and on top of the latest information. I wanna give a special plug to the IBPA that's the Independent Book, Publers, Book Publishers Association. That's who um, I, I've joined and I've been a member for a very long time. And I find that they are a huge source of help and education. They have, uh, literally, they call it a university. Uh, and they have a special category for future publishers slash authors. That's $109 uh, and can be upgraded to self, a self-publishing 
one book author, which is 139. And it is amazing. They just have, I get a, a, a wonderful magazine that has interviews about all the latest topics with all the most pertinent people in, in the industry, ads from authors and publishers and hybrid authors or author subsidized publishers. Uh, and the IBPA does have a code of ethics about that because they're so easy to talk to. I picked up the phone and I called Terry Nathan. Mr. Nathan is always there in the office and he'll talk, he just answers the phone and he, he they, and uh, answers your questions. And, uh, and he said they have a code of ethics, but they have no vetting or policing because there's a big issue around hybrid publish, publishers. A lot of them masquerade as, uh, as hybrids and they're not, they're vanity. So, um, but anyway, back to the IBPA, they also have legal advice. They have awards, you know, for uh, once you get your book published, you can seek out awards. They have peer group connections, discussions, free webinars. Honestly, you would thoroughly get your money's worth. So I highly recommend that. Another thing I recommend is to subscribe to experienced writers' newsletters and blogs. These are, many of them are free. A few of them are paid. Again, well worth it. I'm a huge fan of Jane Friedman, F-R-I-E-D, man. For, she's the former publisher of Writer's Digest. And wow, is she prolific. She has a number of free blogs, and then she has a paid blog called The Hot Sheet. And um, I just subscribed to it myself and found a discount online and all that. And it was still like $43. It was no big deal. And I also recommend Ann R. Allen's blog, A-N-N-E-R, middle initial, Allen, A-L-L-E-N, and uh, something called therightlife.com. Right being, of course, W-R-I-T-E. So just such a simple, this simple thing of signing up for all this information is um, huge for arming yourself with what is current, what you should stay away from, what, what you should be warned about, what your expectations should be. I also recommend going to conferences, writers' conferences, but be careful because subsidy press um, uh, representatives love com writers' conferences. And that's where you find a lot of hybrids or rather vanity press that are masquerading as hybrids. And they do a lot of very high pressure selling and I'll get, uh, I have more on that later. So any questions about everything, anything I've just said, Linda? Anyone? I joined the Colorado Independent Publishers Association and have found them to be a great resource. Great resource. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I just, it, when I wrote, when Michael and I wrote our book, I didn't even know to, to do this. So to me, this is a very hot tip. Um, just to really get in touch with what it's all about before you do anything before. And that, that I also wanna speak about patience and impatience. A lot of people are like, I wanna get this book out there as soon as possible. Slow your roll, because <clears throat> that is exactly the, the scenario where, high, where Vanity Press gets you, um, because you're, you won't, they can get to press faster. <laughs> so, what do you mean by Vanity Press? All right, I'll get to that. Basically, it just means you pay to get published. That's all. Uh, traditional publishing is they pay you. There's one or the other, um, but then there's subcategories. So you have five options for publishing. Traditional big houses, traditional independent indie press houses, self-publish, vanity press, and then a subcategory under vanity press is hybrid. What so was I'm the second to, one? Uh, hybrid. No, traditional and um, independent traditional. I mean, they're, 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 they're not the big houses, <laughs> but I'm about to go into that right now. Okay. Okay. So um, traditional or mainstream publishing. Um, let's talk about pros and cons. Pros, there's no upfront costs. There's a non-refundable advance. 
approximately 20% royalties against the advance. Uh, professional team editing, designing, production, and printing. Print distribution is, is good, uh, usually with Ingram. A higher level of marketing, although it's still up to the author, it's always up to the author, always. Literary prizes and critical acclaim, more likely the potential to become a brand name author. And prestige, kudos, validation. The cons, you'll need a book proposal. You'll need a marketing plan. It's a slow process to print, about two years. You lose creative control. They usually retain all the rights to your work and all the iterations of it, um, but you still get royalties off them. Uh, but you might never get your royalties if you have slow sales. Potentially prohibitive contract clauses. Uh, you always must have any contract, any contract looked at by a lawyer or by um, an informed person. A lot of these associations I've talked about have lawyer consultants or reduced price, reduced rate for members to consult with a lawyer. You still need to promote yourself on all platforms, all which means all the different ways that you can connect with your potential readers. And you must have a website and constant social media. So having heard that, is, is anyone interested in the big publishing houses, most of which are in New York? No, because <laughs> that's why I self-publish. I want complete control okay. of everything. Lucy? Mm, no. Terry? Uh, no, I don't think so either. Okay. All right. So just for the heck of it, I'll just throw in that would be Peng Penguin, Random House, Harper Columns. Uh, Collins, Simon and Schuster, Macmillan, 80% use literary agents and then they get 15%. And they need a high assurance of 20 to $30,000 in sales. Okay, so that's, that's enough on that. Um, and, and that's a little more important for uh, nonfiction than fiction. Fiction is a little looser. All right, uh, so the second category of a mainstream publisher is the independent publishers. You often don't need an agent. Um, and it's more realistic if you're not famous, <laughs> if you're not already famous, because <laughs> those go to the big houses in New York. So uh, this is indie, indie pubs, smaller imprints, and then all sizes of publishing houses, boutique, small, mid, specialty presses, and you know, sci-fi, poetry, romance, children's horror, that could be, you could have a special, specialty press and, and they exclusively do a category and, and they're a smaller house. Uh, you can find a lot who these independent presses are on a, um, a lot of different places. A website called Readsy, it's R-E-E-D-S-Y. Readsy, um, and then also nonconformist-mag.com. The Writer's Market Book, good old Writer's Market Book. This is a book you can buy where they interview uh, publishers and say, what are you looking for? What are you not looking for? How can you be approached? And they also do the, within that agents and um, they have samples of query letters and all that. It's just extremely helpful and they upgrade it all the time. So uh, I really recommend that book. Oh, and then also the IBPA magazine. It's very interesting just to see the ads of the publishers. Um, and, and one of the things about the publishers, if someone self publishes, they, once they go through everything that they've learned, they might say, well, now that I've learned all this and I really have my one book, but I could publish other people's books. Mm -hmm. And so they become small imprints um, who apply what they've just learned and, and then look around for someone they can publish who fits in with whatever they're, you know, they want, they want it to be. And uh, by the way, small independent presses and academic presses do not give advances. 
So that should not be expected. And interesting about the academic pre presses, 50% of them publish books that are non-academic, sometimes oddball books, um, strange books, um, books that relate to the community that the college is in. And they might actually be interested in a cookbook uh, if it's relating to a specific area. So um, for you, Terry, keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, so here's, here's a hot tip also for finding them. You want to find a match to your book. If a publisher that who you think is a good match for you checks out online, buy one of their books to see the quality. Contact a few of their authors for their experience with the publisher. It's not that hard. The pub, the, uh, an author wants to be found. So you could probably write them an email and ask them how was their experience with the publisher. So, so you see why I say you need patience because all of this checking out of a publisher takes time, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. Okay, any questions on anything I've said so far? We're good? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Okay, self-publishing. This is the third category, self-publishing. Now this is includes POD, which is print on demand, that's dig digital technology for printing small numbers of books, eBooks, or working with book printers directly. So Jane Friedman says self-publishing is a sustainable path over an author's career. And um, this, is, this is why, here are the pros. You have complete creative control, less cost to get published than using a subsidy press where you pay them. <laughs> Better margin for profit, which is usually one to $5 per book, depending on the cost of the book, of course. You retain all rights. It's faster to market, uh, especially print on demand and eBooks. It's exciting. It's fun. And there's, you get a huge, sense of pride for your accomplishment because it is an accomplishment. As I said, it opens an opportunity to publish other people's books. And it's really best for entrepreneurial authors who are willing to treat their books or book as a business. Now the cons, you do all the work. You make every decision. You find every vendor. And by the way, always get three bids, no matter how impressed you are with a vendor. It takes energy. It takes focus, creativity, a lot of research, and a lot of determination. And here I, I recommend um, Jane Friedman's book, Publishing 101. She's fantastic at guiding you. And then also that website that I mentioned, Ally, uh, there's a services rating chart by John Doppler and, um, and then kindlepreneur.com will also give breakdowns of all the different services and what you can trust and what you can't and what it should cost. So here's the list of what it takes to self-publish or what you would be tackling. You, have, you buy the ISBN number from Bowker, about $125. Copyright the book for about 45 to $65. And by the way, a lot of the vanity and subsidy press that, you know, sure, we'll take your money. Um, they say, oh, we'll do that for you, it, you know, $5,000. <laughs> and when you really look at how much it costs, you can see how out of whack they are. Um, but if people think that um, getting an ISBN number and a copyright is hard, they don't check it out. And they're just like, I don't wanna deal with any of, any of that. Just here's money, <laughs> get it done. And there's a place for that. Uh, you, you have to either do the art direction or design or hire an art director or designer. You have to do the cover art or hire the cover art. And by the way, there's a wonderful website called upwork.com, U-P-W-O-R-K. It's international 
And it's where freelancers of all kinds can go on there and um, say what their rate is and you know, perform a service for you. Uh, and so I have a writer that was in my writing group and he went to Upwork. He paid $450 for a book cover from a Russian artist and he owns it outright. He buys all rights. And the artist, uh, he basically showed the artist a rough drawing of what he had in mind and a, a photo or two. And the, uh, the Russian artist, I think maybe did two versions. You can, they'll do as many versions as you need before you get the one you want. So for $450, that, and it's an amazing cover too. The artist did a great job. Okay, back to your to-do list for self-publishing. <clears throat> you have to create the front, mat, front and back matter, the copyright page, find an editor because you are responsible for the accuracy and the editing of any book. And you should never do your own editing because whoever writes the book should not do their own editing because they have, they have blind spots, huge blind spots. If it's nonfiction, you might need an appendix, which is, you know, the notes, um, or an index, an alphabetical listing with the page numbers. And sometimes it's worthwhile to hire someone to do that or to buy some software to do that. You need to then solicit testimonials from pertinent people. When we did the Book of Comforts, we took a workshop and this is a great way to get a testimonial, by the way. You take a workshop from someone you want a testimonial from, and then you hand them the manuscript and you say, I wonder if you could look through this tonight and see if you might consider giving us a testimonial that we could use for the book. And this was before we had it published. And so we, I don't know if you've heard of Angelus Arian, but it was an Angelus Arian workshop. She's a well-respected and multi-published author. And uh, she wrote us a fabulous testimonial. Uh, so, um, and the next step is to beta test where you find readers from your target audience to read the book in manuscript form, the, oh, you know, in some of your cases, a cookbook and um, give them feedback, give you honest feedback. So beta testing is important. Then you need to find a printer you need to either format for the printer's requirements or get software or hire someone to do it. But remember that, you know, basic formatting is still always going to be Times Roman 12 um, font at 12 point uh, and, you know, an, in, an inch to two inches around for margins. I mean, that's basic formatting. You need to find distribution which isn't as hard as it used to be. Uh, you need to market the book uh, or prepare to market the book online with metadata. You need to figure out your metadata. Do you guys, does anyone not know what metadata is? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm sorry? Um, what is metadata? Metadata are key words that if people Google these words, they'll be led to you. Okay. Okay, really important that you have bullseye metadatas. <laughs> um, you need to have a website, very important to have a website and links to social media on your website, as well as being active. You need to solicit reviews, place it on Amazon. 90% of the books sold on Amazon are from uh, self-published authors. 90%. Create an ebook, which involves another ISBN number. That's not, you don't absolutely need it, but I would recommend it because that's how um, people find your book. You need to market and promote like crazy or hire people to market and promote. When we first came out with the book of, pub, uh, book of comforts, <laughs> book of publishers, book of comforts, Against Michael's protests, I hired a PR firm to launch us. And he always groused about the money. But, 
you know, we got on small TV channels and that meant we had video for our website and we got, he did a press release and sent it. He already had a list. It was a literary promotion uh, person and he had all his lists. He had all his contacts. Oh, it was so worth it. And we, and he got us reviews. It, it was, it was so worth a little spurt of money and don't ask me what it cost because it was too long ago to be pertinent. <laughs> But that is something I would really recommend for self-publishing. Excuse me, Patricia, sorry to interrupt. Sure. But uh, Terry had asked a question. She said, is there a PowerPoint with these tips by chance? Um, no, no, there isn't. Uh, it's, it'll be on YouTube. And um, if is there a way, Gabrielle, where uh, someone could send me their email and then I could send them? something written? Oh, absolutely. Terry, are you fine with me providing Patricia with your email that you registered for the class with? Yes, certainly. Thank oh, you. Great. You're very Will you welcome. Please, please also provide her mine, Linda at greenthingscooking.com. No problem. Thank you. Am You're I going welcome. too fast, guys, also? No, it's perfect. Okay. But I, I want to interject something that is whole part of the self-publishing process was having to set up your own business with yes. a business license and you know what type of business and that to me was doing the book was easy compared to all of that you know and searching to make sure I could have the title that I wanted that it wasn't already used that 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 was a lot of work yeah it is and that's why the pros have to be worth it yeah if you're you know the pro the, the pro that influences most people is they can do whatever they want no one's telling them what they can't do right uh they retain all rights and the odds for making money are the highest but completely dependent on their marketing right but the truth is all throughout the publishing industry no matter what your publishing experience is it always boils down to the marketing so that's the same no matter what and that and i know that's very frustrating because the creativity that goes into creating a book is very different from the business and the social um promoting and all of that so uh, but unfortunately i you know that's just the way it is that's one of those realities so anyway um yes and uh, like i i have a business license you have to get a business license and um yeah, a lot of, a lot of things to register, you know, you, you are creating a business. So, um, and I, for me, this was a year to a year and a half process. Um, it, it takes immersive learning, which is another call for patience. It's exhilarating. And you're really proud of the result. It, you know, it's, you, you're like, oh, we are going to get this done. But once it's done and you're, you find yourself signing a book for someone who's paying you for your book, oh, it's just heaven, it's heaven. <clears throat> so now Reedsy says in 2022, you need 28,000 to 48,000 per self-published book. So how that's- much, kind of, How much was that? I'm sorry. $28,000 to, to do a, properly do a self-published book and up to about 48,000. So these are current prices. Uh, if you want it to meet the goal that you have. So in that 28,000, for instance, might be hiring a PR agency for, for an initial burst. Uh, so you could always lower the price, but you're gonna lower the result. However, it's time for a hot tip from Jane Friedman. Woohoo, Jane, she should be here. <laughs> uh, and I love this. I love this. It says, she says, begin self publishing in the genre with the highest royalties, the least expense, and the least production ebooks. That's what she recommends. And then let the profit from an ebook pay for the next element of self publishing, like editing. So I'm not suggesting you put an unedited book um, online, 
but maybe you have someone in your family who's really good at editing and um, they give it a going over good enough. And then you hire a proper editor after that. And frankly, if the book's in fairly good shape, it won't be as expensive, but it could be invaluable because there are aspects of editing that uh, only experience can bring. And I say that as an editor. <laughs> and here's the other part that makes that work. With an ebook, you can easily update any changes anytime, or you can download a whole new file. You could change the cover. You can get that ebook out there fairly soon and then you know, improve, 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 and just keep reloading it. The other good thing is that um, the ebook publishing, it, they're not really publishers, they're a service. So there's no upfront fee. They simply keep a percentage of the sales. They have tools to help you do the formatting or it also costs very little, like $45 if you pay them to do it. Plus the formatting they need will work for print. Now, here's another hot tip within the hot tip is that they're non-exclusive. So you can put your ebook on many other um, vendors. Uh, so most of them pay 70% 70, 70 based off the cost of the book. So KDP, Amazon, Kindle, Kobo, KOBO, Barnes and Noble Press, iTunes slash Apple, they all pay 70% to sell your ebook and they don't care if your book is on each other's, <laughs> you know, there's no competition there. <laughs> now, the, um, let's see. Uh, so now that's up to 70%. And if anyone has gone to a sale, they know up to 70% can mean not 70%. So what's that about? Because uh, if your book costs less, then the percentage is less. So if your book goes for 99 cents to $2 and 99 cents, you get 35%. So it, it, it all depends on your situation. And then there's smash words. They pay 60% for retail sales of an ebook and 80% from their own personal store. So all of that will help raise the money to pay for the next step, which would be printers. Any questions so far on that? Did no, you guys already I, know that or is that indeed the hot tip I think it is? I'm gonna sign off right now. I'm so sorry, this has been fantastic. I wish I didn't have to go. Oh, me too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you're Bye. welcome. Bye-bye. And Linda? Yes? I, I just wanted to let you know, sorry, that anyone who attended or even registered for this particular workshop will most certainly receive a recording of the workshop. So even though you're leaving early, anything that's left spoken about, you will receive a recording link to this Correct. workshop. Fantastic. Okay, thank you so very much. You're, You're so welcome. welcome, Linda. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hi, hi, Patricia. I'm wondering if you change the ebook, do you have to get a new ISBN and do another copyright filing? No. No. Thank you. You'd have to have a real substantial change, like add a chapter. Well, actually, just... even with an ebook, I I don't know that the, that you would have to. Um, get a new ISBN if you added a chapter. I don't, I don't think you would. It, same thing if you change the cover? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Printers. There are two kinds. There's POD, the print on demand, digital printing. It's not printed until someone orders and pays for it. How good is that? Um, or if the author wants some on hand because the author can, will be selling it directly um, and you don't have a garage full of books. So print on demand is wonderful. It's good for children's books because the color in digital printing is a little different. Um, it's a little brighter. 
And so it kind of works well with children's books. Uh, black and white books, Lord knows, that is easy for print on demand. Smaller print needs, like if you're are doing a cookbook um, and you don't need it to be in stores, but you want to give it to family and friends or um, a memoir. I have someone in my writing group who has been a pet sitter for so many years and she has a grandson and she wants to be able to leave him a heritage book um, of all her adventures as a pet sitter. And so print on demand will be a wonderful resource for her. It's just that she doesn't need to get it sold in stores. So um, if you're dealing with print on demand, always get at least three samples and, and uh, three bids. Uh, get, I mean, they will happily send you samples so you can see what it looks like. And they have a form that you fill out as a, you know, so you have to know all the details about your book. You have to know how many pages and um, just various things they'll ask you. You pay for the copies, you pay for sh shipping. But the, the um, print on demand place will ship for you. You just will have to pay for that shipping unless the customer pays for that shipping. So a $12 book might cost you about three fifty, dollars And that would be working with KDP, Ingram Spark, Book Baby, Draft to Digital. These are, are some of the key companies who do that. The indie printing, I, I sort of already covered what you, you know, that's, we've talked about how you find it, how you do that. And, um, Oh no, I'm sorry. This is under self-published. Then this this is the it's, it's the POD or the ebook. There you go. All right. Now the fourth category is vanity. Oh no, wait. I wanted to talk about distribution. It's so much easier now for self-published books. It's so much easier. It used to be the bottleneck in the industry. Anyone could write a book. Anyone could get it printed, but you couldn't get distribution. Uh, it it was very hard. That's completely changed. So now there are companies that will distribute for you and 50% um, of the distribution is online anyway. Uh, so either for a POD book, which again is book cost and shipping or a print run, you might go to a dist, a dist, dist I can say it, distributor. Uh, that is a specialty distributor, like I have. Uh, Self-help is my category, and so New Leaf is my distributor, and they distribute self-help books. It's wonderful. It's a bullseye for anyone who has a, a specialty like that, and they take my books on consignment. So that's great. They don't have to pay me until they sell the book, and so um, they do require me to take an ad, either online or in their various magazines, once a year, or else pay a stocking fee. But I have found that every time I have taken an online ad, uh, my sales go up, and I need deductions. So that works out great. Baker and Taylor only do libraries now. Ingram Spark, which is a division of Ingram, is the largest wholesale distributor in the US and they charge $60 a title. Amazon KDP has no upfront fees. Publishers Group West, PGW, they have a sales force. Big, you know, so yeah, Ingram's great, but they're a wholesaler. So they're just getting it out there. But if you can get a distributor who is pushing your book, who is actually has the sales force that are working for you, and, and highlighting the book to their customers, that's the best. So that's about it on distribution. I'm so glad that it's so much easier to do now. And then there's the subsidized press. The first category is vanity. So they don't like to be called vanity press. <laughs> so the pros are uh, you pay them to make all the, the tasks go away, except promotion. You have control over the creative process. 
unless you also pay them to do the editing and the design, but still it would somewhat be to your approval. You can announce your book is being published. It's a, an expensive but valid choice. It works if marketing and sales are not a concern like memoirs, gene genealogies, recipe books, gifts to families and friends. If you're a speaker and you're selling books in the back of the room and you really don't care if it's sold online. Interestingly, that's kind of me now because I've, I've had so many book signings that other people sell my book on Amazon cheaper than I can sell it. So I've given up on Amazon altogether. <laughs> so I, if I do a, a talk, I sell the books in the back of the room and I keep 100% of the, of the money. So, um, so that's good. Cons, now this is vanity. High pressure sales tactics, whack. Oh my gosh, they go after your ego big time. They flatter you. They offer um, packages of service that they say will be, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money with us. Yeah, that's the hook. They'll call you, they'll email you constantly. And this is the big thing they do. They offer time limited deals. Well, you know, normally we charge this much, but I talked to the president of the company about your book. And we're going to offer you a special deal. Oh, it's, it's really shameful. They act excited about your book. Um, they'll take any book in any shape. And they're not vested in your result or in the sales of your book. They're expensive, two to $25,000. And 95% of the authors never recoup their investment ever. If your book doesn't sell X amount of copies over a period of X amount of time, you must agree to buy the difference of, um, the, of the books that they feel they have on hand. But you try and get a sales report from them. They will often, often try to steal your rights. Hugo had, uh, well, he, his lawyer caught, well, I'll get back to him. He's, a, oh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to mention his name. <laughs> uh, a literary lawyer wrote online that he's seeing a new paragraph that show up in vanity um, and subsidized contracts that claims the right to alter the manuscript and then they own it in all formats. That means they can add a paragraph and say that they have, they now own your book. Isn't that horrendous? They're often fraudulent. They claim to be a hybrid. They overcharge. They create vague fees. They're always saying, oh, well, I know you gave us $5,000, but we haven't made, you know, you can't, we can't give you any royalties until um, we make our money back, but they won't prove how much anything costs along the way. Lower quality printing. Book wholesales, wholesalers and distributors prefer not to work with them. There's a stigma of paying to be published. And there is a little bit of one because there just is. Um, you don't have to go out of your way to mention, <laughs> but uh, still, uh, it, it takes serious research to work with a subsidy press. There's many lists on Google. Jane warns about subsidiaries of a company called, and she's not the only one, uh, subsidiaries of a company called Author Solutions because of their high pressure sales tactics. And one of these is Author House, Ex Libris, and Archway. Now Archway is a subsidized press branch of Simon & Schuster. So go figure. So, I mean, I, I just really think that's awful. And there are a lot of articles written about that, uh, about author solutions. They make you buy back copies of your own book. They withhold royalties. Um, they rarely offer meaningful distribution or marketing. Wow, who wants to join in and go do that? But the problem is hybrid publishing, which is the second category, is um, a subsidy press. When it's used honestly, it means that they land somewhere between traditional and subsidy press. They charge a fee 
but they might have real criteria for acceptance, yet they're not as selective as um, a regular publisher, an indie publisher. They might offer more value in terms of editing, design, marketing, and or distribution than a vanity or self-published book. And here are the pros. Good for complicated, full color illustrated books. We'll go to press faster. Uh, author has more creative control. The author um, might earn higher royalties and should retain all their rights. Always have someone look at your contract. It's usually a $2 royalty per book, which is close to what you make with traditional publishing and as much as $5 per ebook. They format the layout usually, distribution through Ingram to bookstores, and we'll put your book on Amazon. And the cons, many vanity presses, they, they like to call themselves a hybrid. So it's really huge that you have to research them. Check on the Writer Beware blog, Scam Alerts uh, for the SF, WA, that's that Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, Scam Alerts. And now I want to tell you about someone who was in my writing group who was at a convention, a respected convention, Authors 101, and I think that was it. And they got nabbed by a company called Morgan James. And Morgan James appears to be a publishing company that says they're a hybrid, but uh, the more I find out about them, the more I think they are a vanity press masquerading. And there have been some articles written about them along those lines. So the person in my writing group, he's published three books with them at $5,000 each. And they said that 5,000 was only for formatting, which doesn't cost $5,000. <laughs> Um, he got a hundred dollar advance per book and his first book, and this is a series of children's books, um, age like eight to 12. First book was in 2013. So in nine years, they say it hasn't made any money to, to, they have to get their money back from a hundred dollar advance or undisclosed charges for printing. It, it, it's it's really painful. They interviewed him. This is how they made him think they were a hybrid. They interviewed him for acceptance and they said they'd reject the manuscript if it had over 99 errors. Because, you know, hey, most, that's interesting. And if he didn't pay for their vetted editors, uh, they, who, which he would have had to pay a separate editor and then the editor would have given a kickback to the company. Uh, he had to submit the editor's resume. Well, I was his editor and my, my resume couldn't have been disputed. So I did the editing, but you know, they really pushed for him to do their editing because that it was important to them that the book be properly edited. In their contract, they had a clause claiming ownership. He called the president of the company and he said, I, I can't, you know, the deal's off. If I can't retain my rights, president said, okay, just cross that off, initial it, and we'll do the same. All contracts are negotiable. There's no requirement in his contract for regular sales reports. He has to buy a thousand books eventually at the author's price of $4 and some cents for a $12.99 book. So, uh, you know, He's indebted to, you know, over $400 more after the 5,000. He can give them a 30 days notice and then he has to buy all the remaining books. Again, no sales reports. He must buy a hundred books two times a year. So that's 800. Um, and as an example here also, he booked his own book signing at the San Luis Obispo Barnes and Noble because they're very supportive of local authors. And no matter what your book is, keep that in mind. 
And he also had a, an author signing that he booked for himself in Morro Bay at that little bookstore called Coalesce. And Morgan James made him cancel the, the Coalesce one because they said it might compete with the Barnes and Noble one. Well, anyone who knows these bookstores know that, you know, what's sold in a little store in Morro Bay is not going to compete with, with a book signing in, in San Luis Obispo at Barnes and Noble. So I don't, that was strange. Uh, and the fee and the quality vary. And, um, and, and the hot, here's a hot tip. You can find lists of legitimate ethical hybrids in online articles and blogs. You can find lists of ethical hybrids. So Jane says, Greenleaf Group, Wonder Well, Girl Friday books are ethical, but they still have packages, various packages, all the way up to $25,000. The only one that she says doesn't, that is a true hybrid press, is called She Writes Press, women's books only. They are, have one fee and they do all the services and they are upfront about all the services you get. The fee is $8,500. So hooray, that's a good hybrid. So, Really, what this, I'm sure you've caught my gist by now, that this leaves self-publishing and independent presses as your best options. So you want to grab the opportunity to educate yourself before making your choice. Don't rush. Do your due diligence in advance. So your publishing experience will match your dream and your expectations. Yeah, I really did talk too fast, I think. <laughs> it's it's 1.15 and I'm kind of done. So let's hear any, any feedback or questions. Um, can we go back to what was... Um, the second category, the independent um, publisher, when you're not necessarily famous, um, how to reach out to them? Like, what is the best um, approach? Like, do you send them a letter? And like, what do you put in the letter? The, the first thing you do is you look them up and you look at the books that they publish and make sure that it's a good match for your book. You um, look at their, their writer's requirements. That should be on their website. So they will say what kind of books they're looking for and how they wanna be approached. Usually it's a query letter. And there's a particular format to a query letter. Are you familiar with that at all? Um, no. Okay, so it's really very logical. A query letter is um, should be really no longer than a page because they have short attention spans. <laughs> so you want to grab them in right away. So in your in your first paragraph is 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 a grabber, something like um, uh, now you have the French cookbook, right? Terry? Yes, yeah. Uh, okay, so, so it would be something like um, um, French cooking is of interest to uh, French cooking, you know, all the information about Julia Child, there's a TV show out on her and, and people know that because I'm French and, and, and I have, uh, and I'm interested in, in cookbooks and recipes, that they, they want to know about French cooking from me. Mm -hmm. This is a fad that won't go away. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, your grabber opening paragraph. And in that, you, you also know the next paragraph, you say why well, you're the perfect person to write this book. It might be a, a, a book might be a good idea, but why should it be from you? 
Okay. What do you bring to the project? Then you maybe talk a little bit more about your book. And um, then you flatter the publisher and, and say, I'm very impressed with your press and, uh, and, the, and the books that you publish. And I would love for you to consider my, my project. Please let me know if you um, have any interest. And if I don't hear from you, I'll contact you in three weeks, something like that. Okay. I have something I call the MIP, the most interested party. If you are the MIP, then you do all the follow-ups. Never leave it that someone is supposed to call you back if you would really be crushed if they didn't call you back. You say, you can call me back, but if I don't hear from you within a certain amount of time, I'll, I'll recontact you. Okay. They appreciate that. They really do. They have enough of a to-do list. Okay. All right. And um, do you think it would be like smarter to just remove my book from Amazon um, KDP and just like try to work on a second version and then send it to them or well don't send them a manuscript unless they say they uh, you know in their writer's guidelines uh -huh. if they say they want a manuscript okay probably what they would want is um a sample chapter and chapter outlines okay and um, and you'd also also want to talk about the uniqueness of didn't you have stories in your book? Or, or yeah, no? there is some illustration, and then I was thinking about like adding some recipes, and then I worked with a graphic designer from Upwork that was supposed to like do the layout for the recipes and the visual, and it didn't work, and then like. It was hard to self-publish, like they were requiring specific, um, like how you said, um, yeah, like layout and it was just blurry and it was not coming up the right way. And so I just got frustrated and then just like removed the recipes. Okay. Yeah. So the book you'd be pitching, you could consider it a whole other book. Have you sold any of your ebook? Yeah, I think I saw like 30. Okay. And did, was this uh, to people you, who you marketed to or people you know? Friends and family. Friends and family. I would take it off. Okay. I would take it off so that it's not seen as competition. Okay. Um, but first, find, find the publisher that okay. you're interested in. And, you know, again, Google is amazing. You know, Google publisher, independent publishers who do cookbooks. Okay. And you'll get some kind of a finite list to explore. Mm -hmm. But again, I also recommend all those other things I said about, you know, various blogs and newsletters and, and organizations that will have lists that will guide you. Okay. And, um, you were talking about like kind of it's it's a business and it's a marketing process and all of that and so what about uh, like the image management um i don't have social media um i'm not someone um like i don't have social media because i don't know how to like portray uh really the image of having a valuable content so um there is a difference between people who just have like social media because they want to connect with their friends and family and then people who have social media because that's a tool for their business and that's a different category and that's a different like time um, investment and all of those. And so I just decided to not have social media because I was like, I do not know how to market the book on social media. Well, and again, that is something where, well, th that you can explore. Um, these associations will have webinars on, on this kind of thing because social media can also be somewhat of a dead end. It's not the end all and be all. Um, mm -hmm. 
because you have to work it and you have to have uh, and and not put all your eggs in one basket it's not about only social media it's mm-hmm. also about um having an uh, the, like facebook has an author's author's pages uh oh. and authors can you could find uh, other cookbook authors and um see if you can get a look at their books you know you know how on amazon you can look inside <laughs> yeah you do that to explore what other cookbooks you know look like um and and then you can send a you know send a cookbook author you know wow i really like that recipe of such and such and i'm you know and that's that's lovely i'm i getting i have a cookbook out now myself on french cooking and um you know i will i i will put a link to your book on my website do you have a website no okay are you willing to get a website uh sure (laughs) (laughs) well that's part of the expense (laughs) yes but you see every publisher every independent publisher is going to say what do you bring Mm -hmm. to the marketing Mm -hmm. because if you're not going to market the book and we don't do a lot of marketing for you it's not going to create a lot of sales. So why should we invest our time and energy in you? Yeah, it's true. So, so it's about making your peace with marketing there because you have a specialty book, you actually have a very good situation because there are like gourmet food magazines and things. Um, Well, actually, I guess that's more for a self-published book because you could put an ad, you know, but I mean, you have a niche, you have mm-hmm. a niche market. Um, not everyone is interested in a French, a French cookbook, but so where are they? Where, where is your audience? Who are they? What are their common denominators? Where would they be? Um, if you get a, in a website is, um, a lot of people I know tackle websites and, and, and creating one for themselves. And there's a lot of templates. And a lot of the organizations I've been recommending will offer a template for a website. And it's actually good to do your own website because then as you insert new information, you don't have to deal with a third party. Okay. Um, but the rule is however long you think it's gonna take you, it's gonna take longer. And however frustrating or easy you think it may be, it will be more frustrating and less easy. But some are easier than others, you know? So it's about how many followers you might have, how, what kind of, um, what kind of things you bring to the whole experience. You can't rely on the independent publisher to do your marketing for you. You just can't. Okay. Because I was I was wondering about that. I was like, do they do it? Are we doing it? And then yeah, now that makes sense. So it's like it's nice to write a book, but you have to be also ready to be a marketer. I'm afraid so. But you can't hire a marketer. Mm -hmm. I mean, but that still doesn't mean you can't be that you won't be involved. Yeah, there are social media specialists who can help you go after a specific goal. Um, One of the things I would do is solicit all 30 readers for testimonials. You can always um, say that they, um, you know, you gave them the manuscript. And I'm not saying lie to an independent publisher that you had it on as an ebook for a while Mm -hmm. um but but the idea is that say that you would admit that eventually and and say that you had such fantastic feedback from your friends and family uh that it was worthwhile to you to pursue uh an independent publisher okay 
I'm taking notes at the same time. Good. I want people to take notes. <laughs> And also, I, I would like to jump in real quick. Um, I wanted to also mention on the uh, social media and marketing aspect of, of things, mm -hmm. we have quite a few consultants that are on our staff. Yes, that can assist you with that avenue with your business. So all you have to do, Lucy, is reach out to me and I can connect you with uh, one of our many consultants whom can assist you with the social media and the marketing aspect of getting your, your books out there, if you would like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So definitely just send me an email and I most certainly will connect with you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Very welcome. The glory of the Women's Business Center. That That's is right. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Forgive me for not mentioning that as a resource. Uh, quite yeah. all right. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, and Heather. Did you have any questions? Uh, she put something in the chat box here. Let's see here. So Heather, to you, Patricia said, please send me link to transcripts and other materials, PowerPoint or index to the companies you mentioned. Excellent seminar, very comprehensive, easy to follow. Thank you, Heather Howell. And she left her contact information awesome. for you. Okay, good. And so you'll I'll have provide that. that. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Definitely. Excellent. How about you, Lucy? Um, I think I don't have any more questions. Yeah. So uh -huh. I think it was very clear and it was very helpful. And I also have a friend who has been writing a children book. It's um it's a story with letters and the letter E is not very um accepted by other letters and she's been doing all of the drawings for the past year or so. I'm very happy to share like all of the knowledge that you shared with us today with her and like let her know that it's less complicated than we think when once it's like we know where to start and like how to go and all of those things. So, yeah. I like that as the bottom line on that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. And if you don't mind, I have another message in the chat box from Terry to Lucy. Uh, she, Terry says, Lucy, if a comparison between French and American eating habits is, is big point, maybe a good image for the cover would be a plate showing French food, colorful, healthy on one half and American food, uh, various shades of tan on the other question mark. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> and if health is your focus um that leads to another niche for publishers there mm -hmm. are many publishers who specialize in books on health and healthy eating and food okay yeah that's true and, and remember what i said about you know contacting um perhaps one of their authors yes and and finding out what their experience is with it you know, it's hard for authors to remember because they're like, oh, please, please publish my book. I really want my book published. But where the press is coming from, where the, the publishing arm is looking for a, a book that is going to fit within their list that they're going to be proud of and, and they're looking. And if they're not finding, then they're happy to mm -hmm. find you. So you're not, they're not doing you a favor. You're helping each other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have to um, leave in like five minutes. I have um, some work to go to. Um, sure. Yeah. I don't know if there is anyone... Um, that has other questions that um, I would be happy to hear. But. Oh, thank you. Well, let's just see, does, does anyone have any other questions they would like to address to Patricia before we end our webinar? I will say this, that um, one of the things that uh, um, Friedman said was that if you want to have an independent publisher publish you, don't self-publish first. Hmm. I know I made the biggest mistake ever. 
because I didn't knew how to like do and like the last part that you were talking about like all of those companies who call you and they're like oh yeah we can publish your book we loved your book only for like five thousand dollars and I was like this is the biggest scam ever and I just got so frustrated because it was literally in between the big house publishing where you have to get pretty much a million of followers like their main question was like how many followers do you have on Instagram and I was like that has nothing to do with my book but that has to do with all of the sales which makes sense for them and uh, I was like okay Amazon I'm just going to put it on Amazon and see where it goes and then um, and then I saw the webinar that we have we are having today but it's like one year later you know but it's okay it's like I can always work on it and just like change things and yeah yep yep a lot of it is about understanding how to market it and yeah. how much time you want to invest in marketing it mm -hmm. everyone should do a little marketing every day under the very best scenario instead of save it all up <laughs> yeah although having a one day a week for where the whole day is focused on marketing is not a bad idea either if that's what get it done gets it done mm -hmm. yeah. but, and it's really it's i want to emphasize it doesn't have to be 100 percent social media there are, are all kinds of things that you can do i presented my book at the local library they've had um, a local authors mm -hmm. you know um uh round well basically a fair <laughs> and um and i also there's there's all sorts of um like at the pavilion they had a outdoor um spring festival and i shared a, by renting a table with another author mm -hmm. and to sell books there and um so you know the the marketing is um, interesting and varied. And if you can develop a talk about it, that's one of the, well, see now I'm starting to get into my, the next webinar. <laughs> but selling, you know, giving a, a, a talk, even for a cookbook about the, the healthy aspect and the joy of that type of cooking and what your experience is, has, was like to develop the book um free talks to rotary and all the those different clubs and then selling the book in the back of the room you know mm -hmm. that's how a lot of books get sold yeah that's true yeah so, and highlighting on social media around holidays is a huge one. Oh yeah especially with thanksgiving Sure, Thanksgiving, but then also um, Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. birthdays, um, perhaps Father's Day, Father's Cook. Yes, true. Yes, yeah. you know, and all that, and, uh, um, and Christmas, and really, the, that's the whole idea is to take advantage of all those opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you very much for um your time and sharing all of your knowledge and experience um i do have to go but oh. um thank you for doing that because it's really um helpful and um yeah so thank you you're welcome have a good and nice to meet you you have a good day Okay, and I do believe that Terry had unmuted her mic a little bit earlier. Terry, was there something that you wanted to add by chance? Um, yeah, I have like a thousand questions, but I think <laughs> we've only got about minus seven minutes to go. So um, I'll, I'll um, definitely watch the recording and take better notes. And um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. It was a great, really informative webinar. And, um, and obviously, you know this business. And the one thought that occurred to me was this is a business. This is your business. And you are have a, you're approaching it that way. 
giving it all this time and attention and money because it's yeah. it's your income. So well, and it's important that it not be one hundred percent of your income. Because... Right, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, like the fellow I'm doing this for, it's a bio autobiography. It's not his business, and he's not gonna. I just don't see him putting that effort in there. So I'm trying to find the best possible solution, and that would be probably ebook. Um, and uh, and I said, you know, we could go to the print on demand for a few copies, you know, for people. And but man, I got so many great ideas. You know, the you know, getting reviews and testimonials and. Um, I've got like three pages of notes here, Patricia. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank that's, you. That's so I very great. much appreciate it. And there's just so much, so much more to learn. So when is your next webinar? June 16th. June 16th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Looking Good forward to it. Good luck to you. And awesome. thank you. And thank you also, Gabrielle. Oh, you're so very welcome, Terry. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, let's see. And then we've got my lovely director who said, excellent presentation, Patricia. Thank, thank you for you bringing me. your, <laughs> Patricia, thank you for bringing your expertise to our Women's Business Center clients. Yay. It was a really, really interesting uh, presentation, Patricia. You know, some of it was a reality check. Some was quite, quite frightening. And then, uh, <laughs> but, the, but the majority was uh, informative and inspirational. So um, my my favorite thing to get besides jewelry is books. So um, I, that is just uh, just all different kinds. And I just loved hearing uh, what people were interested in in publishing. So if we can be of any of assistance, please contact Gabrielle. She is here and we will connect you with our consultants and future workshops. <laughs>